Well, I'm working on the 5000 and uh, I've got the drum where the drum's locked in. Uh, but the caps and servo just keeps pulsing. Um, I don't even know uh, why because I actually changed the caps and motor and uh, still got the same issue. And I thought it might have been the caps and motor, uh, but it's not. So, but what I do want to, and I broke one of the potentiometers. The plastic just broke off on it because it's so brittle because of its age. And trying to adjust it without anything to turn it. Yeah, it's about the best I can get. It. I can get it pretty close, and then it, you can hear the motor just pulsating. There's an adjustment for the speed depth, and it's possible that that could be it could be bad caps on that as well because. What's happening is that the tape is not uh, playing back at the right speed. So we got the the capstan and the drum is the drum is locked in, but the capstan is not. So there's a problem with that with the capstan. So, don't understand why it's pulsating like that. But we've got the drum locked in. So I'm not going to adjust the drum anymore because that's pretty well locked in. But there's a potentiometer for the speed depth. And if I try and, and, and turn that, well... That really doesn't do much either. And. But I think there's some. Well, there's some Elna's in here. Are these just. Gosh. Just keep replacing cap after cap after cap. I can get it to to kind of lock in, but the the drums locked in, but the capstan is not. We do have um, a potentiometer that is actually um, broke off. But you can see that we. Uh, we at least got the the drum to lock into place, but there's a lot of problems. I just about bet that um, this IC here is failed, or interesting, it just uh, stopped on me. Yeah, well, at least we got the, the, the drums locked in. Just not the capstan. Um, well, system control board. This IC may have... I'm wondering if... Uh, this IC has got a bad joint. Um, but 
but our capstan should not be doing this. And our capstan, oh, there's a 16 at 1 microfarad, we'll change that one because uh, I'm going to change the, uh, I, I temporarily put 50 volt at 1 in and I'm going to take those out and put the uh, 25 in because I've got a I ordered some 25s I wasn't able to get any of the 16s I used to have some 16 at 1 microfarad and uh, don't know what the hell happened to them but I bought them specifically if I ever worked on a 5000 series beta machine And it goes into black and white when uh now part two I have literally started to replace um, all of the caps uh, in the servo and capstan servo. I do have a picture now, a, a color picture, and I have a continuous picture, um, but we're still running at too slow of a speed. and. It's almost like it's it's even running uh, slower than even the beta three speed is is too slow. So I was looking at some of the capacitors. Um, this is the control amplifier. So this is where the um, one of the the wires this wire coming from the um, circuit board that connects to the capstan there's a little circuit board with the cross member on it so that wire plugs into the control amp and I'm just thinking now these two capacitors tested bad so did this Elna capacitor. These two bigger caps tested okay, um, but the this one back here is questionable. So that's actually an Elna back there as well. So the question I'm trying to think of, what I'm trying to think is that maybe, uh, just maybe, because of these caps are bad, it's what's causing the speed fluctuation. Because we have a speed problem. 
our capstan isn't running at the correct speed and no amount of adjustments that I do is working so that tells me that the problem is somewhere on the circuitry and this is where I believe it to be I'm hope that I'm right because but you know as old of a machine as this is right I mean this was probably I would say 1980 or 1981 when this machine came out it was very very early 80s but when these machines are working properly they have uh, a superior uh, picture quality they have the best picture quality out of all of the beta machines so if you want a deck that's gonna play back your tapes at the best picture quality I would recommend an SL5000 series because it's got the 710 chassis all of the 5000 series betas the 54, the 56, the 58, the 5000, the 50, 10, the um, 5200, those all used that three piece head drum design where the scanning, the, the scanner is um, in the center and it rotates. And so it also helps with uh, stops the tapes from sticking to the drum. Tape stiction doesn't happen that often with this chassis. So I have to hear the audio before I can actually make um, speed adjustments. I'm going to have to buy a Y adapter so I can adapt the mini plug into an RCA. Well guys, this is frustrating as hell. A lost video signal. I've been working on this thing for about an hour. No video, no nothing. Not even pause. No video whatsoever. Well, now I gotta find out why I got no video. Stupid thing. You know, this is a... I, I like a challenge, but uh, this thing is, is just about ready to uh, kill me off. And, uh, man, I'm just about ready to just throw up my hands on this thing and quit. But I can't do that because this is not my machine this is a customer's machine so I need to fix it I need to get this sorted out okay so uh, after we got a nice clean stable image I went to test it again and then I had no video whatsoever and I was doing some diagnostics and doing some checking and started to look at the components and whatnot. And then I spotted this. These wires have... Now I have marked them with a red and a black pin because I am going to... Um, have to reconnect the wiring um, but you can see the wires have come undone from the circuit board so it looks like the wire just pulled completely out but I'm thinking that this might also be the cause of the capstan motor uh, pulsating um, and what I mean is like the, the capstan motor will come on full speed for about a half a second 
and then it'll stall out and then it'll spin and then it'll stall stall out so with those wiring that wire being um, severed the connection has been severed uh, that should explain why my capstan motor is uh, pulsating and uh, I pretty sure that this is the cause I don't like working on the SL5000 series because of this reason the wiring always tends to uh, come apart because the, the wiring is so small and when you pull down on the boards and you're opening and closing the board uh, this can happen and this has happened to me before um, and so okay why was I not getting video well okay look there's two more I could see two more that have come out of their sockets so this has got how many more come out of the socket there so looks like this one goes over here that one goes over there okay well I, I've repaired the wires and uh, what I done was put a, uh, a pin some pins in their uh, leads off of uh, caps so I got some leads that I poked through the hole soldered them in now I'm gonna put some uh, heat sink or heat shrink around the connectors but I have connected them temporarily just to see if this is going to repair the video I don't think it's going to do anything with the capstan motor because if you look down here it says VA which is basically a video audio so that's all that does so but somebody had a weird modification over in this area here and I'm wondering as to why somebody was jumping uh, pins straight across because that can definitely short things out yeah so I'm trying to determine as to why the uh, capstan motor is um, turning slow well why is it turning at such a slow speed because it's like pulsating so I'm gonna have to unplug the video here so I can raise the the board I'm gonna raise the board up here so that hold on I gotta do this So we've got the board raised and this is what the, the motor is doing. It's not turning quite right. It's turning way too slow. And uh, so I was trying to figure out what the heck is going on here, right? So why is it doing this? Well, check this out. I'm going to show you guys here. Plug my video back in here I also had to re-solder the uh, video connector but you saw that we lost our video simply because the wire connecting to the board which is a hard wire that's soldered directly into the board um, 
that connection failed and so that's why I lost the video but check out what happens when I do this so I'm going to unplug this wire here this wire down here I'm going to unplug it and when I do my speed is going to pick up and I'm going to show you why in just a minute so now watch what happens when I unplug that plug so ready here it goes look at that our speed has increased Our speed is normal as you can see now our capstan's not running at the right speed we have no speed control but it's running at the right speed except for for the audio now the audio is gonna be sounds like a chipmunk okay what I'm trying to get across here is the circuit board that connects to this cross member okay that circuit board has failed now I was messing with this today and I actually now you can see see how good that capstan's moving so I was taking this off and when I took this off the thing sped up to the right speed it's not exactly the right speed but it's pretty close so now we got the capstan running Our counter is now running at the right amount of speed because now we have a counter going well the owner's complaint was that the the counter wasn't working well the counter wasn't working because the capstan wasn't turning fast enough and now it is but we'll hook up the audio and we'll show you what it sounds like now i'm gonna plug that plug back in and we're gonna let you hear what it sounds like like when it's struggling and then we're gonna unplug it and we'll let you hear so we're gonna turn i got the volume up a little bit we're gonna plug in the volume and i'm gonna unplug it and then we're gonna hear the difference but we're heading in the right direction, but we're still far from accomplishing something that works. Although now, video is, is good. My drum's locked in. Okay, so my drum is actually locking in. What you're seeing here is the capstan is not locked in. Just the drum is locked in, not the capstan. If the capstan's not locked in, you'll have this kind of a, a problem in image. It looks like it might be a drum servo, but it's not. The, the drum servo, if it was running too fast or too slow, we wouldn't get any picture. It would just be um, like a, a snowy mess. It would just be like uh, like watching a TV, analog TV, with no signal going through it. So let's get the audio hooked up, and I'll show you what's going on. Okay. Well, this is what it sounds like when it's not plugged in. So it's still not running at the right speed. 
but it's running close enough to where you can actually see an image, you can hear. And I've done adjustments on the capstan free the capstan free play potentiometer makes no difference because it's not plugged in. Well even when it is plugged in it doesn't make a damn bit of difference. You wanna know why? Because either there's a problem in the control amplifier circuitry, the control circuitry for the capstan speed. You see, this detects the rotation of the capstan. And that tells the servo and the servo circuitry um, is what controls the speed. But anyway, so this is running at almost, almost at the right speed. Not quite, but almost. Now hear the sound when I unplug. I'm going to unplug this wire here. Now, or no, I'm going to plug it back in. I'm sorry. I'm going to plug it back in. See that? Hear the audio? See how it's struggling? See how it start? It's real slow and it's sluggish and it's um, running real slow and then stops and then goes and then stops. So when I go now. I'll unplug the wire here. So we'll unplug this wire. You can hear the audio kick up. And you can now see the capstan is just going like hell. Now why is it going like hell? Because there's no speed control. This does not only does it uh, pick up the rotation of the capstan, but I also believe that it does maybe possibly sends out information as well. I'm not 100% sure on what this circuitry does uh, because I don't have the service manual and um, I basically want to show you guys what's going on here and what I have found out I am gonna change this out um and we'll see what happens because I do have another one of these but we'll change it out if it still does this after changing that then I have to look at the circuitry on the control amp uh, the control amp is right here. CTL amp. Control amp. Okay. This control amp. This is the circuitry in here. Now, I'm going to test some of the components as well. Because either this piece, this circuitry here has failed. Or the circuitry here has failed one of those two or could have a capstan that failed a cap that failed that I, I put a new cap in but with the cheaper capacitors that I buy sometimes they'll be brand new and they'll be bad and uh, 12 volt vids actually did a uh, this a video on that he was doing a video and he was talking about that how some of the cheaper capacitors that come in those assorted uh, capacitors with uh, different values that comes in these little plastic cases okay these okay these are cheap I mean you can get them for anywhere between 10 to 15 dollars 
and there's various different caps. And yes, I know that the uh, labels are kind of messed up. That's because I spilt uh, alcohol, rubbing alcohol on it, and it kind of destroyed the labeling. But uh, these particular um, cheap assortment caps, sometimes they can be bad right out of the right out of the the thing container. So this does occur sometimes, but I haven't had that issue yet but I have had it with this batch so I'll probably just get another batch and I don't know we'll, we'll see what one I'll have to test them with the ESR before I put more in from this batch I'll probably just get another patch but but yes you can get bad caps even though they're brand new never been used they can be bad it's just like with those voltage regulators that you buy on eBay. I bought things on eBay. I bought regulators on eBay. I bought several of them that worked fine. They still work. And then I bought some that fail after probably about a month. And they fail. Or I've had one where it was bad right from the get-go right right out of the package it was bad and I've had people ask me on YouTube well my machines doing the same thing but I put the regulator in and it still doesn't work well because you probably got a bad regulator and that's what I've been telling people sometimes those new old stocks are not real regulators sometimes they could be cheap knockoffs or just really bad parts but we also have to determine here how much time am I gonna have to spend to get this thing working and the thing is it's not economical for me to repair this thing if I've got to go through all this hassle now I've got another issue with this thing there is a broken switch which when I hit eject it wants to take the tape out too soon tape is supposed to unwrap around unwrap unthread around the drum right and then eject well if I hit eject right now what's gonna happen Yep, because it doesn't want to eject because there's a switch that's messed up. So what switch is that? Well, this is a broken switch. This one right here. This is the switch. This one right here. That's the one that's broke. Now, when I push the switch in, okay, then I'm going to hit the eject. I'll release it and now it gives me back my tape but with that switch broken it'll sit there and see now it's chewed my tape but I did that to show you guys this machine has too many problems for me to fix it economically I don't know I'm going to talk to the seller. I'm going to see what he wants. To, I mean the owner. I'm going to talk to the owner. I might have said seller before, but I meant owner. I'm going to talk to the owner and see what he wants to do. Because I'm going to tell him, I'm going to encourage him that probably be a good idea if I just sold him a machine that I've already refurbished. Because this may not get a part three because at this point in time this machine has too many problems and he I charge thirty dollars an hour okay so I'm charging thirty bucks an hour it can take me usually I can repair a machine if it only has one problem uh, I can usually repair it within two to three hours okay depending on what has to be done to it 
But when you got a machine like this that has multiple, multiple problems and you're spending, you know, I've already spent way too many hours on this thing that I can't charge for because it would just be, the price would be so freaking high, it's ridiculous. So at this point in time, what I am going to do, I am going to replace that, okay? I'm going to replace that. I'm going to replace this piece right here, okay? I'm going to replace that. Now, if I replace that and it fixes it, great. If it doesn't, that means there's a problem somewhere in this circuitry. But if it doesn't, I'm really going to talk to the, to the owner and I'm going to tell him it's just not economically good for him. Um, I have plenty of beta machines that I've refurbished that are just sitting waiting to be uh, waiting for new homes and so really I think it would be more beneficial to, to the owner is if I just sell him a machine for a hundred dollars plus the 40 or 50 dollars shipping it'll charge to get it to him because I'll have to tell them what machines I have I'll have to go through and I mean look I've got a I've got a Sanyo I've got a, a couple I've got a couple Toshibas I've got some Sony's I the SLO 420 I'm not willing to give up because that one has a linear uh, stereo and it's just not a machine that I'm wanting to give up but I do have a 2500 that I could put together and make work, um, probably, but we'll see what the owner wants to do, because at this point in time, I, this is too much wrong with it. I'm spending, I have probably spent already approximately six to seven hours trying to diagnose the problems and every time I fix something something else happens to it and this is the problem with old electronics this is the problem when you've got a machine that has been sitting for years or that somebody has tried to repair and may have caused more faults if somebody doesn't have the knowledge to know how to repair something and they're trying something and it can screw it up and cause another problem cause another fault you see what I'm trying to say so this is part two and this is going to be the end of part two and I'm sorry to say but I think economically wise for cost efficiency he should just get another unit because I don't think this unit is going to be worth putting the kind of money if, if I have to put more hours into this thing he's looking at about probably a two to three hundred dollar bill maybe a little bit more than that and that's not something that I think he'd want to do. I don't think he'd want to do that. You know, he's probably got some beta tapes that he wants to transfer. Or he's probably got beta tapes that, you know, maybe he's got some movies on beta like I do. Maybe he's got a movie collection that he would like to just sit and watch movies. Um, I don't know. I mean, me personally, I probably have three to four hundred beta tapes so I get the fact about wanting to have a player that you could just put movies in and watch them okay so I get that and you know and I really appreciate the seller bringing this to me for me to repair but when you've got a machine this is kind of reminds me of my ED beta 
that I have. Every time I turn around, I would fix one thing and something else would happen to it. And that thing is actually condemned. I'm not going to spend any more time on that one. Because that one broke again. And it's not, even though it's my own machine, I'm not going to fix it anymore. I give up. I'm done. On the ED beta. Will I get another ED beta? Yeah, probably. Later on down the road. But not right now, because there's more stuff that's more important that I need to get right now in my life than uh, ED Beta. Yeah, I will eventually get an ED Beta, but anyway, that's beside the point. I already spent way too long on this video, but this video is basically number two. I am going to talk to the, the owner see what he wants to do if the owner decides that he's okay with spending that much money which i think that personally i think he should not there will not be a part three okay but if he's okaying me with that kind of money being spent then okay we will go ahead and we will proceed on part three and we're still having electrical problems with this thing, right? We haven't even tackled the mechanical problems. You know, and with that switch being broke, well, it's not really a big deal. But it's like all this kind of stuff just keeps happening, you know? Just one fault after another. And that's why I put in the video description for the first video. It needs a lot of love. Because it does. And it needs a lot. And this thing is just not in good enough shape to where I would... I mean, I would not... If it was me, if I owned this machine, and it had this kind of problems, this many problems, it would be a parts deck. It would not be a repaired unit. It would not be considered to be repaired at all. It would be parts. So we'll see what he wants to do. I, I do, I would like to have this fixed, but the owner needs to know what he's up against. So with that being said, um, we're gonna end the video here, but this is part two. If the owner decides he wants to spend a little bit more money, get it going, then we will. We'll do a part three. Now, part three will probably be the end. Part three will have all the electronics fixed, you know, and then we can do the mechanical parts, which are just belts, and then we have to change out that switch. But I don't think the seller is going to want to uh, put the kind of money into this thing that needs to be. Because the stuff that needs to be done, yeah. Anyway, you guys know my thoughts. I'm going to talk to the owner. I'm going to let him know what I found out. He's going to see the video. So he's already watched the first video. He's going to see this one. He knows what's going on. So we will go from there. But if you don't see a part three, don't be uh, hurt because uh, it, it, this machine is just, just too many problems. So, see you later. Bye-bye. And thanks for watching.